A lot of freaking bolts in that thing. Right? They don't want to fall off. Okay. What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to a Rad Formational video about RX-8s. We've got the engine out of my 2004 RX-8 up here on the engine hoist swaying around. And we're going to talk about the lower intake manifold, not only removing it, but also what is happening inside of it. There's a lot of different valves that are working in here in order to increase the torque of your rotary engine. And those are a lot of things that will throw check engine lights and make you have low power, misfires, this, that, and the other. First things first, there's no way for you to get the lower intake manifold off the engine in the car. So you can service, you can on this side here, Justin, from the top, you have an intake valve here that actuates, okay? You have an intake valve in the side of it this side that actuates down in there which is towards the forward of the car towards the front of the car both of those the, the middle one is called the SSV I don't know what this top one's called those you can service in the car they'll come out of here it's a real pain to get to this point um, Justin can attest to that the last set of valves though that you can't is the auxiliary port valves so these engines are a six port engine which, if you come over here, this is another engine out of the car. So you can see on the intake side, you have six intake ports. You have a port here, here, and here. These upper ports are opened and closed by a valve, a little electric motor, in the lower intake manifold. If you have excessive carbon buildup, these can get stuck. The gear can break in the lower intake manifold, which I will show you when I remove it here in a second. So those are the, the gist of the valves that are going on. So we've got the engine out of the car. I got all the bolts off of this. This is the electric motor that controls those auxiliary port valves. The other two are actuated via vacuum. So as we slide this out of here, you're gonna see, the theory just should slide out of here. That's good, that's good. Okay, so you're gonna see as this comes out of here, frying tool there is a multi-layer steel gasket in here guys so if you're planning on reusing it don't be too harsh on this thing trying to get it off I would suggest like not reusing it but when you're in a pinch when you're in a pinch like we are we're getting this car ready for a track day in uh, six days, days. <laughs> so, not very long let me get a bigger screwdriver for prying we'll get that right off it's coming further out. Is it whatever this is? This big pipe? Yeah, I mean, I think this side's just dragging. See how mine's like stuck? This side's stuck. Yeah. Alright, so what we got is a stuck auxiliary port on this side. Because the manifold moves. But see that this, this circle, this little cylinder right here by my finger, if you can see that, the shiny spot, that's stuck in the engine. And it's like... Is that supposed to come out with the manifold? Yep, they'll come out with the manifold. Oh, I need to pry on the gasket though, because the gasket is... Uh... So, this multi-layer steel gasket here, which you can't really see, is actually bolted in as a cover for the auxiliary port sleeves. So it holds kind of all the linkages together, which I was hoping I could show you here in a second. Mine's fighting me. I'm sure yours is going to as well. So I'm going to try to get some heat and some PB Blaster in here and see if we can't get this off. Maybe try to push it back, push it back in and then pull it back out again. That's fine. Just pry it out right there. All right, there we go. Just needed the tandem all right. Yeah. Okay. Dude, that's definitely grody, dude. All right. Let's, show Let's you get that. this thing in the light. You need to see this. Okay. All right. We got the intake manifold off. These are those valves. Notice the excessive amount of carbon buildup on these things. You can see all the grodiness in here. Just nasty. This should be. 
like nice and smooth. You can see all that coming off. So all that carbon is what's going to make these seize up, and that's going to make them not open, as you can see. This is like glue, this oily mixture that's in here. Terrible. So I'm going to go ahead. We'll go over to the workbench real quick where there's some light, and we're going to pop these 12s off, pull this little shield off, and show you how this, this works. If it was in a first gen, if it was in a first gen, I'd glue this thing on with silicone, and it'd be great. Because then if it did leak, I could take it apart when it's in the car. But you have this engine has to come out to change this gasket. So I'm not putting it back together if there's any reasonable doubt that it's going to have a vacuum leak. Because I'm not pulling the engine back out. So here's your cover, guys. Big fancy gasket. They're kind of expensive. I'm going to have to like overnight one so I have it Monday, I guess. Or see if Charles has one locally. This is the actuator motor. So this little shaft spins the big shaft, which drives a rack and pinion gear up here. See it in there? Let me grab a little flashlight. I got one. It just turns these things. You can see the little light. Oh, the yep. gear up there. The rack and pinion. And that rotates <laughs> these things. Notice. Notice it's not rotating. Very, very well. stuck. And uh, it opens these ports. So if you imagine this tube is open on the end of it, right? The intake in, inside. Air goes in here, goes in this. When this sleeve is turned, the air is trapped against the iron. And when this opens, it allows that air to go into the engine. And that gives you that top end full rip out of these RX-8s. The reason that they close those is, or, is to generate more torque and restrict airflow down in the lower RPMs, make it idle better and just drive better in general. Very, very, very problematic system here. Very. These plastic gears, yes, it's plastic. Moz is dumb. And then the rack part is metal. The plastic gears will strip if these get stuck. These get stuck in the little electric motor, just can't even turn it. There's a lot of things that go wrong in this, which is definitely Couple this too many plus the engine being low compression plus whatever is a uh, look at this dude you ever see that inside a bmw engine well yeah n54 <laughs> <laughs> walnut blast carbon buildup issues so let's go ahead as well we're gonna pop the uh the little motor off here okay. so this is the drive motor you can see the gear down there this spins this shaft which then now that the motor's off i should be able to turn this which then actuates the really, really grody stuff. Oh yeah, that needs to be open there. The horribly grody fifth and sixth port. Oh, what a wacky oh thing! Yeah, dude. I mean, granted, this wouldn't be tilting yeah. in the motor. But just the fact that it was stuck in there was you know, all Pr this should enough. be should be nice and clean. All this carbon in here shouldn't be in here. It should just be good and. And like crispy clean. Look at that. There's like, I don't know if that's by design, but there's a lots bolt. of play in that. Oh, yeah. Same over here. Maybe that's by design. So, in order to remedy this, which I'll show you in the next video of me putting the engine back together, is I'm going to clean all of this out, brake cleaner, clean the gears out. Make sure all of this functions, moves back and forth really smoothly, and then find a new manifold gasket to go on it. We know there's a way, if you look, you can test these little motors, which sometimes these will fail too, and it won't be able to spin this, um, can but I tested that? this before. You can change this at, when the engine's in the car. Because I tested this before the last track day with this car, and I got in there and twisted that back and forth, and it still twisted. It was rather grody, but it still twisted. Um, like these weren't stuck as far as rotation, but they're definitely like very much this engine or engine. This motor could not be exerting enough force to break the tension versus my hand can, sure. you know. Anyways, we get it all cleaned up, inspect everything, make sure the motor works. A little three pin motor, forward and backward. Um, and then install this back on the car with a new gasket. And that's literally... To clean your SSV, the next thing too, which I can show you, you would do this in the car, but this is a real easy one to clean in the car. You take these two bolts out, kind of a pain, and then this whole thing slides out. 
And this is, oh, come on. God dang, this one's stuck in here too. Dude, this thing is not happy. Did you see all that <laughs> crap that came out of Dudes. it? Dudes. This is another valve that is really crappy and grody and nasty. And if this is stuck, you will get a check engine light. And it'll be like SSV, not operational. And uh, it's an issue. And it knows that it doesn't work because of this little micro switch here. So if it, can't, if it senses that this isn't opening... It uh, tells the ECU that it doesn't work. So, fun fact is that. And then here, little Easter egg for all you guys that remember when I put this car back together the first time. That's my 10 millimeter socket. <laughs> Did you just see that? <laughs> yeah, it's down in the bottom of that. <laughs> I dropped this in there, and I had to buy a new one. I got it back. You can see all the crusty. It's been in there for a minute, you know. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, I'll pop this valve off just so you can see it. You have to take the actuator for this off to get the uh, fuel rail off, the secondary fuel rail. These valves, this one's far enough away from the like heat of the engine to not get much carbon buildup. I've never seen one of these that's stuck and dirty, so um, that's where that one goes. But just look at all the, the nastiness in there. Yeah, crusty. So, I guess I got some time to figure this stuff out. I was hoping Justin would be able to help me get this engine back in today. But, unfortunately, due to some extraneous circumstances, um, I'm going to have to get some parts and put this back in by myself. Maybe I can get Charles out here to help me. So Just a freaking gasket. Good, dude. Literally, like, it's just... And it's, like I said, if it was a first-gen, guys... I'd clean all the crap off this, lather this baby up with some RTV, stick it on there. But, like, you can see the coating is just, like, failed. And it takes, like, two and a half hours and a lot of cut knuckles and a lot of complaining to get the engine out of an RX-8. Peep the last video. You go check out the last <laughs> video. And uh, I'm not doing that again. So, with that, guys... Thank you guys very much for watching. Mad thanks to Justin for coming down and helping on these last couple videos. And, uh, do you have any thoughts? What are your RX-8 thoughts right now? Let's hear it. <laughs> give, it give me a 20 second rundown of what you think about these cars. I like them a lot less than I did before. I've only previously driven this car in the old black one. Yep. Really good to drive. I agreed with Eric on that front. Um, but it's just dumb. You know... The engine's super small, and you think you'd be able to reach stuff, but there's like a whole shelf on this side. You just can't get to things, and that seems pretty silly. And it's old. Well, this what car is this? It's old. Or what year? Before. Yeah, BMWs have better connectors, so I like that better. My fingers hurt from pulling connectors, and there's just a lot of mess going on. And for a three thousand pound car with two hundred horsepower. This is a lot of effort to go through to be like 210 horsepower. <laughs> so with that, guys, thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Go check out the other videos on the channel if you want to learn more about RX-7s, rotary trucks, Cosmos, all sorts of cool rotary stuff, Justin's BMW stuff. Go learn about that. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Keep it rad. Peace out. we got to find a dog. Oh, yeah. Still two dogs, dogs here. It's been a minute since we've seen him. <laughs> we found our dogs. Since we didn't find them at the end of the video. Only took us, what, an hour and a half? An hour and a half of walking around in the woods looking for our idiot dogs that decided to go roll in cow poop somewhere.